There it is. Welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. It's your host, Hatch, with my boy. With the other host. Y'all know who it is. Merry New Year to everybody. This is T.O. We are in the house. We in the building, ladies what and gentlemen. Up? What? Get yep. your popcorn hey, ready. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Get popcorn. Get your popcorn ready. <laughs> oh, man. And we got a special guest today. Travell Gaines is in the building, man, ladies I and gentlemen. I've seen this dude in about five years. Hey, yeah, man. Well, you've been working out them whole five years. Oh. All chest, all swole. Look at you. you got, is, these, is these quarantine pounds? I have not seen him since... Uh, Man. You worked out with A.B.? Oh, on the, on the beach. beach. Really? Yeah. The beach. Oh, pr- okay, Man. you know what? Speaking, speaking of, of yeah. Yeah. A.B. Speaking of yeah. A.B., again, like I said, first, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate yeah. it, taking yeah. the time out. But since we already here, let's start it off. What was that relationship like when you had these two guys working out? Because they like to compare these yeah. two, and we say there's no comparison. Bro, it's, I know, yeah. I know, Unbelievable. I know. It's, yeah. Yeah. But, before we get to that, it's just <laughs> disrespectful that the things that he's done like the allegations and his rap sheet, and then people compare me to what he's doing. Like, I've never reacted in such a way that he has, he's responded to certain things. So I think for me, it's, it, I'm not pissed at it. I just don't understand where they're getting their logic that we're, we're comparable right. in, in a sense, especially right. when it comes to behavior. Right. Because everything that I did on the football field when I played, it was honestly, it was, it was within the guidelines, it was fun, Everything that I did when we played around that time, it was obviously heavily vilified, criticized, and now it's being embraced. So that's why, again, we, we, we had this talk, Monday, Monday morning catch, and everybody on Twitter, some, some guy put this Twitter feed up and this graphic like, oh, who's the bigger diva? A, B, or Charlie Ones. Right. I'm like, for me, it's, it's disrespectful. Definitely T.O. Disrespectful in so <laughs> many ways. But as you were getting ready to, yeah. to speak on, it's like, yeah, I know A.B. personally. You know him personally. Mm-hmm. The people, the things, and what people see, I didn't see that. I didn't see that from him. Obviously, we all have different personalities. But you've worked it with him, spent a lot more time mm-hmm. with him than I have. What can you assess what is going on and what has transpired over the last you know, four or five years? I'm going to keep it all the way real with you, okay? And I'm, I'm going <clears> to <throat> address three things. First of all, the only comparison between you and Antonio Brown is you guys' work ethic. You guys are the two most hardest working football players I've ever been around in my life. And I'm not saying that everybody doesn't work hard, but the schedule of work. Mm, the okay. schedule of work. You gotcha, know, the gotcha. yoga, the flexibility, the strength training, the, you know. Right. Thank I've never saw nothing. Take care of your body. Exactly. Those two guys never saw nothing like that. That's the only comparison. Mm-hmm. And That's before it. we get into that, <laughs> That's we're, it. Talking, right, right, right. we're talking to Travail Games. Give yeah. us a little bit of background of who you yeah. are, because everybody's like, who, who is yeah. this guy? We just, Travell Gaines, yeah. blah, blah, blah. give us a little snippet, sure. a little background of who you are For before sure. we get deep So I'm, I'm Travell Gaines, I'm the owner of Athletic Gaines Training Facilities here in LA. Um, I've trained multiple top players, five number one overall picks, uh, 47 first rounders, multiple pro bowlers, um, Draymond Green, Lonzo Ball, Jimmy Butler, um, I know I'm missing guys, so I feel Pascal Siakam. Uh, a lot of guys in baseball, football, and basketball, and uh, some of the best. I'm here talking with two great guys now. There it is. Cool. There it is. But yeah. then, you know, he trains everybody out there, basically, <laughs> right. that, that yeah. comes through LA. Because right. again, as people don't understand, right, in your off season, you don't always stay with the same trainer for 15 years if right. you have a career. So very, f- yeah, very you few, yeah, right? Very you want to try yeah. this one year. You might try, you know, working on the beach one year, mm-hmm. and then next year it's track. Next year it's weights. Whatever. Yes, sir. Um, so again, going through all of these guys you train, who stuck out? to you the most, like at the very beginning, like this dude's gonna be a dog. Excuse me, guys. And he end up, uh, and he end up being the one. We gotta get back to the AB stuff. Okay, but okay. Yeah. The guys who stuck out to me the most over the years, like I said, we just sticking with football, uh, Bobby Wagner, mm. uh, AB. Seattle Seahawks. Yep, yep. yep. A- AB though. You know, I met <clears throat> AB his second year in the NFL. Okay. Um, he came into the facility to meet me. He had on a 50 pound military grade weighted vest. Wow. And he walked to the gym. Wow. You know what I mean? So like, He's always been a different guy. Mm-hmm. Um, Reggie Bush, right. different. Mm-hmm. T.O., different. Right. Andrew Luck. Um, uh, Russ. Be- Russ Wilson, yeah. different. You know what I mean? Some right, guys right. like that, yeah. Okay. Yep. And so let's go back to the A.B. thing. So you, you, yeah. again, you saw him at second year, right? He's a whole yeah. different person at 23, 24 years nope. old. Same right? dude. Same dude, <laughs> right? Same dude. Okay. I think, you know, the thing about A.B., and again, um, I'm going to be very clear, and I want to get to the situation that he happened on Sunday. Yeah. Right. A.B., is, he, he's a real one. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to treat you accordingly. Right. 
If you a female that's loose, he gonna treat you like that. Mm -hmm. If you keep it real with him, he gonna keep it real with you. But if you try to punk him or talk down to him, he, he has no room for disrespect. Okay. And not saying he handles everything the right way, right. but if you, if you disrespect him in any kind of way, he's gonna act accordingly. Again, okay. he needs to keep his emotions uh, in, in check. check. Right. Right. You know, there's other ways to do it, but um, you know, that's just how he is. He felt he was disrespected. You know, or basically what I was told was that he, he was injured. You know, he had been dealing with an ankle injury. Right, yeah, because he didn't practice that hurt. He didn't practice Thursday, Correct. Friday, or Correct. Friday. Thursday or Friday, right. They're, and they're, then Saturday is basically nothing. It's, it's like a walk go. Anyway. Pretty much a walk There you, you go. don't really do anything yep. on Saturday anyway. The, the, and I've done that too where I think my last year, this was the first time I've ever done it. Like my last year um, in Cincinnati, I had a bit of a uh, meniscus issue that happened during the course of the week. I didn't know if I was going to actually play. Mm -hmm. So they brought me in early, come to the facility, went out and did like a little workout to see if I was capable of playing mm -hmm. on Sunday. So you're kind of like on the, on the bubble, on the questionable list. And then once they see you move around, and in their eyes, if you pass the eye test, then you're going to be activated. So yes, I'm sure that was the situation with Correct. be. Correct. They were, they were depleted on some receivers. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They were losing to the New York Jets in New York. Right. Mm -hmm. And coach was like, yo, get in there. He was like, I can't go. Now I'm gonna stop y'all right there. If y'all know anything about the kid, he loves football. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, right. he was very close to hitting some bonuses. Mm -hmm. Right. Very close from uh, yards, catches, and one touchdown Touch standpoint. Right. Right. He did what he had to do. He makes an extra million dollars. Right. So mm -hmm. that's a more of an incentive for him to be exactly. on the field. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this idea that he blew a lot of money and this, and that, and the other, or like he wigged out because of such. I don't buy that. Like we talk. Yeah. And everybody started texting me about the situation. Yep. And before I passed any judgment, I'm like, I need to hear his side. Exactly. There's always three sides to a story. Right. But obviously, the Bucks. But yeah, let me Antonio let me Brown finish that story. Yes. Yeah, so, so the coach told him to go in. He was like, Coach, I can't go. You know. And the coach straight up told him, If you can't play, get off my field. Get mm -hmm. out of here. We don't mm -hmm. want you here. Leave. Mm -hmm. So. He reacted as he reacted, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the rest was kind of what happened. So, so I've watched. T play, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen numerous guys play. Mm -hmm. When we're in game mode, if I can walk, I can run. Correct. Right? If he's walking off the field, to me, you're okay to play. We don't have, we don't need you to go in there and give us your best route ever, but you could be the decoy. Just go run go routes, outside release go routes for the next quarter. We need you on the field. Right. So as a player, as a teammate, that's what I'm expecting from you. So when I see you walking off, regardless of the situation, I'm thinking, is he really giving it his all? Everybody plays 70, 80% in the league, healthy. But I think that's just part of it. So I, I don't know if it was an, his injury was enough to hold him back if I see you walking off the field. I agree. He, he, was, he wasn't just walking. He was jumping. You, he was you jumping feel right? Everything. He over there crip but walking off, you know, yeah. to... <laughs> but I can't, I, you know, I can't speak to that. You know, exactly. I'm not that man. I, I don't know how his, how his body felt. <laughs> right. True. You know I can't, I mean? I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I can't yeah. speak to that. I don't, obviously there's something more to what is being said or what has been reported mm -hmm. and what is being shared or what have you. Well, they haven't cut him yet. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Right, paperwork, they cut him. yeah. They haven't yeah, cut him. Physically, you know? they haven't No, they haven't cut him. They told they him something. They said it, but there's got to be some contractual yeah. lawyer, agent type <clears throat> yeah. of stuff going on. And the thing is, sure. I got to thinking about this too. For him to walk off the way he did, and Bruce Arian said that he asked him to go in, and Antonio gave him his reason as to why he couldn't go in. Mm -hmm. There may be a grievance filed if they yeah. were to cut him. Right. Possibly, what depends what's in his contract. Right. right. Because again, you can't force a player to get on the field against his. If he's if, they, if he says he's hurt, regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's guys that have been had a torn ACL and you've seen them walk off mm -hmm. the field. Yeah, absolutely. You but, but, you, but you've also had the instance of when that happens, the trainer usually comes over and tells the coach he's out. That's a fact. There's no trainer involved in this whole scenario. Right. How yeah. injured are you if you're not talking to right. the trainer? Right, but if it's not a, if it's a situation where he's on the sideline, you sometimes you're if you're going in and out. And I, I'm, I don't, I didn't see the game. The whole, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't the see the, right. the exchange between he and the coach or whatever. And it was cold there too, weather-wise. Right. So yeah, I could have tightened up on him. All right. That. So and, and this is, I'm not making an excuse for Antonio Brown. I'm not condoning what he did. I don't think he should have reacted or responded in the way that, that he did. But I'm just trying to hone in on like the exchange and what happened at that particular point. We don't know. We don't know what was going on or what have you. But like I said. He refused to go in. He gave him his reason. We heard 
after the fact the, the next day why he didn't go in. Yeah. So when we talked about it, and I, we, I didn't address it when we discussed it, but I'm like, man, there may be a, a he, he could file a grievance if they just, just yeah, cut him. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because you can't force a player to go in and play if he, if he says he's hurt, he's hurt. That's a fact. Absolutely. So, so. all good. Well, again, A, B, we'll see how this whole thing right. plays out. It ain't yeah. going to be on us, right? Yeah. But I, I just, I just, the whole <laughs> thing is just, I just don't want people to, and similar to T, you know what I'm saying? I've been knowing the kid for a decade. Mm -hmm. Never disrespect me, never not paid me. He's been awesome. Just a great guy. Right. Just a great. I mean, I dealt with that with, with T, man. Yeah. A lot of people would be talk crazy, but greatest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. Greatest guy in the world. So many players get so misunderstood. He's not the greatest, guy. greatest guy in the world, man. I ain't never had a problem with him. <laughs> <Yeah. for> you. <laughs> you a sucker, so he treats you accordingly, Hatch. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> get you what I'm going to the problem, man. You want to get job, man? First time a guest get his ass whooped on GPR, I, I, baby. I'm just I letting you know what time I it is. Have said it's the first it time for everything. You I know couldn't have said it any better. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I thought we were. Hey, I could have said it. Nah, that's my man, bro. No, it's all good. It's all in fun, y'all. It's all in fun. No, but for real, I mean, I get it all the time, man. Like, and even with the, you know, like I said, the clip, uh, the, the Twitter post that everybody put up, I, that was Has to my response up. was like, respectfully <laughs> and disrespectfully, there's no cons no comparison. I yeah. said, I told the guy, whoever it was that the, the, the post or the account, I said, clearly y'all been drinking the Kool-Aid. So mm -hmm. over, the, over the years, the media has pegged me, they portrayed me in a way that people, when they see me, they think that that's what they see coming. Right, absolutely. You know, so yeah. over the years, like I said, I've always been headstrong, I've always marched to the beat of, not in my, really my own drum, but I walked with a lot of confidence because my grandmother raised me in a way that I, I knew when surrounded by certain people, I knew what was going on. I may not have said anything. I'm very observant. I don't say a whole lot. Um, a lot of people probably, probably think that um, I'm, I have this big yeah, personality. On the, field, on the field, it's a different story, but when I'm off the field, I'm pretty chill. I'm even keel. I'm low key. Hash knows that. Um, the people that I'm around, I'm very comfortable with. That's when I'm myself. But I don't, like I said, I don't gravitate to everybody just because. And there's a lot of things that have happened throughout the course of their career where I've trusted people, this, that, and the other. And then now that makes me draw back even more. Mm -hmm. So, like yeah. I said, I mean, people have, have this perception of me based on really 15 years plus of what the media has basically created with this narrative that I'm this person, I'm selfish, I'm arrogant, I'm cocky. Blah, 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 blah. They questioned my character. And you like said, ugly. Yeah, Forgot that, about that's, ugly. That's part of it. You know yeah. what I mean? I've never, like I said, to make these comparisons, like there have been guys like, you know, Pac-Man is my, my one of my boys. You know what I mean? Uh, he's gotten in, in, in situations and people will be reporting on things that have happened. You know, he was defending himself at the airport and, you know, rightfully so. I mean, then people are commenting on that and then they bring my name into that. Oh, people like Pac-Man and T.O. I'm like, what do I? Why? Why is this my is name? what they do. It's what why the is my is name being do. brought up in that situation? I had nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And Pac, that's the homie. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I said, why would like Ryan Clark and these guys bring my name up in conversations where there's not even no comparison, none whatsoever? So that's where I get off. I mean, and, and, and it ticks me off a bit. But again, people listen to the media. You know what I mean? And it's out there that I'm this type of person. So people, when they see me coming. That's what they think. So let me go back in your past a little bit, right? Yeah. Again, you were a superstar high school athlete. Right? I wouldn't say superstar. I was right, good, Gordon, you went right, Ella, because again, we're small school, to, you know, um, when college football players. When he says that, players. when he starts giving you a lot of like really punk. He, oh, he wants to bring me down. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah. exactly <laughs> what he's doing. Um, so you went to uh, LSU out of high school? No, Wait. I went to USC. USC out of high school, State. right? Yeah. San Jose State, USC. right? You end up playing uh, yep. at, San Jose, at San Jose State, yep. right? But you went to USC and you didn't play. So nope. we're always talking about the high school, uh, high school to college athletes now, right? Yeah. They have a lot of media, you know, I guess pub, if you will. They don't really deserve it. They get there. They're five stars. They get to these schools. They transfer. You transferred out <laughs> with the San Jose. How mm -hmm. did that make? You, did you see this stuff coming? Because you kind of did the same thing, or how is that different now? Man, Hatch, that's just a great question. I'm glad you bring that up. I think that one. Um, I mean, I graduated high school in '99, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so it wasn't all the media stuff right. and things like right. that. Um, I think that I was a good player, but not a great player, and I was not good enough to go and be gone all 
all summer playing baseball. So I played baseball as well in the Montreal Expos organization. Yeah. So I was going all. Like I said, superstar athlete, football and baseball. Yeah. You're getting drafted at yeah. 18 years old. Yeah. That's Seven, I was 17. Oh, I was 17. Wow. One, I wasn't mature enough. And then two, I was not good enough to just show up the first day of fall camp and try to play football. It just wasn't it. So yeah. like that just, the maturity standpoint, I should have stayed and stuck it out. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I would have, I would have been part of that Pete Carroll era. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I ended up leaving. Um, and so for kids these days, I don't understand all this transfer stuff. Right. I just don't, I don't, I think that it, it's, it's not a good thing. I think that you can't really build a program. I think it doesn't help with adversity. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I would have never transferred. You know, it's the so worst thing I've ever made so in my life. Being that you mentioned transfer, yeah. it, it, and kids are quick to transfer fast. now. Right. Quick, is it, fast, do you hurry. think it's because obviously it's, obviously it's, a, it's a generational trend or fad that, okay, if I'm not getting the amount of time or I'm not in the stats, stats I want, or right, whatever, right. then I need to be somewhere where I'm at the forefront or basically they're like the star of the team. Is that, is that kind of really the movement of why kids want to quickly just, just like almost like Bart hopping in a sense or yeah. just school hopping to, to get where they need to be to be the star of the team. Man, you know, guys, it's funny because I think there's different scenarios. Right. I think there's a situation like a Caleb Williams. Right. Where the guy you went to go play for, he leaves. Okay. That's right. different. That's right. different. Exactly. That's different. A lot that guy recruited yeah. you, you're one of his guys. Exactly. You it's his program, Elias Ricks. He went to go play for a legendary defensive back coach at mm -hmm. LSU. And he leaves. He got fired, he leaves. I'm out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But when it's a kid who just pouting because he ain't getting playing time, he a freshman and... Mm -hmm. Nah, right. man, that's probably not... entitled. Yeah, coaches yeah. probably have told him, "Oh, right. well, we're gonna, you're, you're gonna be this, we're gonna do this." Exactly. And then they get there, and it's not, it's not panning right. out. Exactly. And right. like you said, these kids are not really facing the adversity. These right. are these are obstacles that you're gonna have to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, life is not always cookie yeah. cutter. It's not gonna be as yeah. smooth as it's all you plan it out yeah. to be. Yeah. Well, again, I think if you're talking about how easy the player thinks it is, right? Because again, you're, you're getting all the future NFL draft picks that you train, right? Yep. And so we're seeing 21, 22 year olds, they get on Twitter and they say, hey, I'm leaving school, going to the NFL. Yep. How do you know you're going to the NFL? That's a fact. And they get to this training facility and they're like, oh, I just gotta be here a couple hours and I'm, I'm still gonna get to the NFL. It's not that easy, right? So when you see players like that come into your program, like what's your, what's your motivation? Like, look, you're not working hard enough, or you're not good enough. Do you say those things to them, or do you just like, look, I just work out the kids as they come? Man, it has to be real with you. At this point in my career, I don't even deal with that. Because mm. I just deal with, like I said, the DK Metcalfs, the mm. Bobby Watt, you know what I'm saying? The, yeah. the criminal Upper, crim type line. of kids. The people that, you know, I've been so blessed to work with guys like T, mm. guys like TJ Husmazada. Mm. These dudes made me better coaches. Mm. And so okay. when you're used to that kind of standard of a work ethic of a player, those are the kind of players that I want to attract and I do it. I don't market, I don't solicit, so I kind of right. sell certain kind of people attract to certain kind of people. So right. I don't really deal with bullshit. So okay. I'm real with you, man. I, I don't have to. So That's awesome. I, I like that. I like the way you you mentioned that you're you're accustomed to a certain work ethic, yes, a certain sir. athlete. What is it about you? And I'm doing this for the for the for the audience. Yeah. What is it about you? that have athletes gravitating to your, your program, like I said, whether it's baseball, whether it's yeah. basketball, and obviously football. What is it about your program? And obviously, like you said, you don't market, things of that yeah. nature. Um, I met you through Hank Basket. Yeah. You guys were doing a gym at yeah. that point in time. So um, what is it about your program? What is it about what you bring to the table, like I said, to get the athletes that, you know, some of the notable ones that you yeah. mentioned? Um, so again, there are parents, granddads, moms, or whatever that are going to be watching this show. And again, they may not know who Travell Gaines is, but they yeah. will after watching this segment. Yeah. What is it about your program um, that you feel that kids need and that gravitates them to you to enhance their abilities from day one to whenever they leave? I think a lot of it is just getting the right kid because um, not everybody comes mm -hmm. into our program a superstar mm -hmm. for whatever reason the right time, the right place. Guys have elevated, got bigger contracts and reached certain levels, but I really don't know. I think the thing that's different about me is I'm not trying to be in your entourage. I don't hang out with none of the players. Mm -hmm. I don't go to games. I don't ask for tickets. Mm -hmm. I just want to train people. And I think that a lot of people respect that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, and I'm not saying everybody can do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm all about pushing any trainer or anybody forward. 
I have nothing against nobody. I love all trainers. Everybody's great. But as far as what I do and what we do at Athletic Games, we just kind of really want to focus on the athlete. Individually, what does this person need? What environment does he need? You got to know how to speak to him. You got to know how to talk to him. You can yell at some people. You got to stand back with some people. Mm-hmm. You got to love some people up. Everybody's different. So I think taking that approach individually for each person is what have kind of attracted us to the, a certain type of, you know, uh, players. Yep. So my next question is, okay, so that, what, about, what about the kids? Like I said, obviously, you know, with these athletes, you have a job to do. Um, you have to charge for your services. What about the kids that possibly want to utilize you and they can't afford you? Is mm-hmm. there, do you have All day. A, a program to where, yeah. you know, it's... Scholarship type. Yeah, program. Kayvon Thibodeau's a kid. He's been with right. us since his sophomore year of high school. No, he's going to top five yeah. pick this, this <clears throat> top year. Top five, you've been disrespectful, man. Kayvon's the number one overall pick. Period. So number one? Number one overall pick, period. Is Think he, he going to say that? C- call him right now. See, he's Who is this? The defensive end of Oregon. Right, he's oh, projected that, to be the top five. He got hurt top early. Five? He got he pro- in the top five. He's saying he's number one. Hey, what's your name, man? G. That's G. G that's G Scott over there from G. Ohio State. What's up, G. young fella? Come on, man. What you, you what's think, up, you, H? You think he gonna be number one? Hey, KT. Hold on, bro. Hey, we got a we got a question for you. Hey, my guy. Hey, you go. Who's gonna be the number one pick in the 2022 NFL draft this year? <laughs> hey, hey, I, I just wanted to hear you say it, my guy. We, ha- we have it there, ladies and gentlemen. That's making, that's making me feel like you think it's some scrubs that can hang with me. Ooh, okay. Don't ask no questions you already <laughs> know, know the, the answer, answer to. to. Okay. My <laughs> man. Kayvon Thibodeau, you heard it here first. Number one pick of the NFL 2022 draft. Oh my God! Oh, he's oh he talking that too. Who, who got the first pick oh, this year? Oh man, hey man, Jacksonville. Who's their left tackle? Don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Hey man, all the best to you, man. Good luck, man. Stay hey, healthy. We'll, we'll see you on the show next week, my guy. Come on, come on, we, get we, some yeah. of this GPR. Yeah, we gonna. Oh, I definitely, I definitely yeah, no doubt. We are gonna get you on here, man. Yes, sir. All, all right, right, brother. There it is. There it is. All right, brother. Now, that makes your job fun, though, right? Yeah. Characters like that, right? He's, of course, athletic, right? Yeah. The, the future's ahead of him. But to have that type of personality in the gym, that makes you want to come to work every day. Right. So, but, but listening to that now, mm. I said some mm. stuff like that. Oh, he's arrogant. He's cocky. But you he's know, this, that, no, that. no, you didn't say it in, in college, though. It's a difference you when know you know what I'm saying. Did. I didn't have I that ability that's to what say it. I didn't have that ability. He was a little bit ahead of his time. So I, I think, think right I, now, I've said, I've said I that think before. now, you know what I'm saying? I think it's a little more acceptable. Yeah. It's a different kind of coach. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a little more acceptable. I think he's a little ahead of his time. Open to that stuff. Yeah, but he used to be talking slick, though. Oh, he would right. talk, he talk that slick talk, but I don't think it was nothing disrespectful. Right. I mean, he right. never said nothing that wasn't true. Right. Exactly. Jeff Garcia was a bum. I'm trying to tell you guys. You know what I mean? He's a bum. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's, yeah, okay, man. okay, hold on. <clears throat> From a teammate point of view, yeah. Right? And again, we've had this conversation off camera before, right? If you have a wife, if you're married, and she comes to you in a dress, and she says, honey, do I look fat in this dress? You know you can't say what you really want to say, so you say, babe, you look beautiful. But you talking about T.O., he has So no he filter. can't tell his wife that <laughs> she's fat in the dress, no matter if she's fat in the I, dress. I, 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 no, so you I can't talk the... to your teammate and say you are... <laughs> I wouldn't say she's fat. Well, well, why do you call your teammate a bum, or do you? Because he you, was. I, I, what, but what, you can't who, say who, it. Who, who did I call a bum? <laughs> Jeff Garcia. No, I didn't call him a bum. What'd you call, you him? call him a bum, bro? No, no, no. I, I think when you got <laughs> it was got, heard as he's a bum. Well, that's your interpretation of what I said. <laughs> that's what we're saying. That's your yeah, interpretation. Yeah, absolutely. But, but your interpretation is not my, my actual thoughts. Which, okay. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. So. And Nick, that was a situation. I probably shouldn't have said it. Or you could have said me, it a they, different no, way. Right, but I they, get no, no, with, with the whole Garcia thing, they asked me about his sexual orientation. So, my boy, we had an off, like, in the summer conversation, right, and they right, asked right. me, and my boy had this funny saying. He was like, yo, if it looks like a rat, if it smells it's like a rat, rat by yeah. golly, it's a rat. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That was my response to them asking me about. I got you. So, again, I. I should have never answered it that way. I should, looking back on it, 
but I was saying it to be funny, not actually, and didn't You're understand. You're not funny, right? But bro. I didn't understand You're the ramifications of my so comments now you at understand. the time. Right, but when I say something is funny, funny, right? When he You're says funny something. looking, it's different. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I don't claim so, to be funny. But um, I was, no. but I was just like, it was just it. tongue in cheek. I get it. I get it. It was tongue right, in cheek. Right. And like I said, I I apologize, and that's not what I really meant. But I said it. But it is what it is. I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? But no, but like I said, we're, that makes your job fun, though. Yeah. Right. Oh, Characters yeah. That's, like that. Oh, he called him. Yeah, that's Kevin. Gener, generational mm-hmm. talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, killed the NIL space. Right. You know what I mean? Just let's let's great... talk about the NIL space for yeah. a little bit, too, right? What are you doing in that space to. Kinda... Well, I think for, you know, it started with Kayvon, obviously. Kayvon approached me, and, and, you know, we had a long standing relationship and asked me to run his process. That mm-hmm. turned into me becoming his business partner and manager. Mm. And what we looked at was the kind of kid he was. And so off the rip, we said no to chicken. So we wasn't doing no Popeyes or stuff like that. Yeah. We wasn't doing no soda. Like Nothing, Jack- I'm not aligned with yeah. who he is, his right. brand. It turned out a lot happened. of money. Right. I mean, a, a fast food company offers $150,000, said no. Right. Mm. But, you know, that, because- but again, that, that, wow. to somebody looking at them like, oh, he turned out 150, but it's not really worth it in the exactly. long run. You know what exactly, because I mean? you got to think about for us, like we did, United Airlines, mm-hmm. we did Nike, deal directly with Phil Knight. You know, we did uh, Porsche. You might uh, want to do some Garrett's popcorn. Man, that'd be awesome. Shout out to Garrett's popcorn, <laughs> the best popcorn in the world. Absolutely. I lived in Chicago for two years. We'll get to that later. It was horrible. <laughs> but the popcorn was outstanding. But um, yeah, for, for him, it was just it just making sure that we found partners. There were zero cold calls. Um, they're all based off relationships. He ended up doing, you know, $1.2 million in NIL money. Wow, you know, that's but big. but that came especially for a defensive lineman. Absolutely, you know, but it also came to getting him on the phone with people selling the vision, storyboarding out the vision. All of our deals were six figures plus, right. and it wasn't a lot of deals. You know, I think we only did like six or seven deals. Right, right. You know what I mean? One of the right deals. It was the right the person. Right deals, right. And so, like for me, you know, it's I'm in. The, I'm just gonna be honest with you, man. I would love to work with a lot of guys. That's what I was trying to explain to you earlier, Hatch. I think the NIL space is great, mm-hmm. but people have to be realistic. If you're a third string fullback at North Dakota, North Dakota State. Probably not going to get nothing. There's no right. money in there but for you. are not going to yeah. get the deals yeah. if you were, you know, you might, these power five. Yeah, you might get a slice of pizza for free here and right, there. Right, right, right. Not no real deal. You might get not, 10, 20 yeah. grand deals. Right, Yeah, right. And, and You I'm, have to be realistic about the expectations of Exactly, NIL. exactly. And I think that it's going to calm down a little bit, but I'm in the Ferrari business. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I got another Go Ferrari fast. coming up <laughs> this year. So if okay. it ain't that caliber of a kid, I'm not going to waste my time. Right. So I think that's for me. I'm going to play in that space on Ferrari level talent. Okay. Right. You know what I Are mean? Are you gonna create your own NIL company as well? No, I don't How's think that? so. I think right. I'm just gonna stay being a lone wolf. I got got a couple of kids coming up this year mm-hmm. I'm gonna work with. Well what about those like kids? I mean I hear what you're saying, like yeah. you want the top, but what about those diamonds in the world? What about world? the Matthew Hatches and the yeah, TOs of yeah. the world? Like yeah, I, I, we were late bloomers. And that's not yeah. to discredit or you know, minimize what you're trying to do, but right. what about like you said, what about us, these those type of kids? Well I was I was like y'all too. Right. We went to San Jose State. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. but, but you started out at USC. Correct. Correct. Right. And then you went to correct. San Jose State. Correct. Correct. But I think that <clears throat> I think it's just all about being re- realistic and matching expectations. I right. think that somebody, you two guys, have dynamic personalities. So I think if you have the right person selling mm. that, no matter what well, school you're at, nobody knows he has a dynamic personality. Till he got Hater on, alert! Till Hater he got alert! On so you, popcorn you, like, co-sign, you, you co-signed him up. Exactly. You co-signed like, him up. I wouldn't up. really align myself <laughs> with somebody that's boring. You get what I'm saying? You're right. a hater. No, no, I'm giving you props. Like, I, don't I wouldn't want align, your props. I wouldn't align myself or have a show with somebody that's lame. A lame duck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go ahead, dog. I know listen to this duck. <laughs> no, nah, but that's what, that's what I think. I think that it all comes down to managing expectations. I think no matter what level you're at, if you're just a guy like, man, if I get a $500 or $1,000 here and there, you're that's good. a lot of money for a college kid. For a college right, kid, right. Set your expectations to that. Right, right, but you right. know, if you're a kid like a Kayvon Thibodeau, you all want to make a million dollars. I thought he was crazy, but we ended up making it happen. Right. Right. So, okay, let's go back to when you were in college, when you yeah. were coaching, right, yeah. the little trouble at yeah. LSU. So, yeah. What's going on now? Would that had still happened? And kind of explain that whole story, your background. Man, you that. know, the funny part about that, that was the best day of my life and the worst day of my life. Wow. You know, being from South Louisiana, being from that culture, I had my dream job at 23 years old. You know, being a strength coach at LSU. Mm-hmm. It was phenomenal. But I think that um, leaving LSU 
what's the best thing for me? Because I think when you're from the South and you look at a region, that region was everything. I would have never, ever left South Louisiana in my life. Mm. At 23 years old, I was like, my life is set. Mm -hmm. I go fishing, I go hunting, right, I could right. go to football. Right. But then, you know, I think that, you know, when I, when I got fired from LSU, I had no idea what I was gonna actually do in my life. Mm. I was 25 years old when I got fired. Mm -hmm. No idea. And so I ended up moving out to LA, and I remember flipping a coin between Atlanta and LA. Wow. Moved out to LA. Literally flipping a flipped coin. coin. Wow. Flipped a coin. So I knew that's where the athletes were at, Atlanta and LA. Yep. Mm -hmm. Came out here, I had negative $16 in my bank account. Wow. I got a motel in Reseda for 30 days and kind mm. of went from there. I knew Reggie Bush. Mm -hmm. and then from there, I met Matt Leinert and other players and stuff like that. But I knew nobody when I moved here. Wow. Just kind of built from there. I didn't have a car or nothing. That's amazing. Yeah. And yeah. again, we, we talk a lot about transitions on this show. And for I've always said I would never have came to L.A. if I hadn't played in the league. Because I yeah. don't think I had the confidence as a 22-year-old to say I want to go to L.A. and experience this City, because it's hard. It's hard it's a real out city, here. Man. It's a real city. It's a real city. Um, so again, I commend you on that. Just coming out here and making it happen. And now, of course, you're, you know, said training the celebrities yeah. and athletes. You know, the top guys in the world. Yeah. So from that point, you said that's the best and worst day of your life. So now, what's your aspirations to have the, you know, your your pinnacle of, of the rest of the next 10, 15 years? Well, I think now, you know, um, just did a, a huge deal with Crunch. Um, a licensing deal, which will get my program in all of their 364 locations throughout America. Wow. Um, you know, we have locations in LA, have a great partnership with Puma. I'm gonna keep expanding on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think next, you know, I just really want to um, really focus on just training athletes. I like being a father. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I have two great kids. Awesome. How old are your kids? Uh, 19 and 5. Nice. Okay, yeah, nice. I kind of built my life around their schedules and them. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, to be honest with you, um, really, I think, like a lot of other people, um, I did not go to HBCU, so okay. I've been really intrigued about helping them out, so I'm getting ready to help out a HBCU program. Yeah. Really How about Langston? Langston, LU in the house, baby. Yeah, yeah. shout yeah. out to Langston, but yeah. no. <laughs> I, got, I got a program in mind. I want to help out and help them get, get nice. going. So what do you think about Ben that you just mentioned, HBCU? Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you, what do you think about the kid, Travis Hunter, uh, who, who decommitted? Um, obviously, one of the fate. highly touted uh, kids come out of high school, uh, phenomenal talent. Yep. Uh, Travis Hunter, what do you think about uh, him decommitting from Florida State uh, and, and joining uh, Deion Sanders at, at Jackson State University? Absolutely love it. I wish more kids would do it. I, I, honestly, if more kids went to a program that was a fit for them, mm, culturally and from a depth standpoint, we wouldn't have all this transfer portal stuff. I agree. Right. If on. more, I'm saying it one more time. If more kids went to a school that was more culturally good for them and depth-wise good for them, we wouldn't have all this stuff. Message. So I love, what, I love what Travis Hunter's doing. Right. I hope that more kids will follow. I don't know if you guys remember this. Kayvon Thibodeau almost went to FAMU. Right. I almost I went to FAMU. Yeah. Oh, wow. That really? was his number two. He would have went, yep. if they had, any kind of strength and conditioning program, program he would have went there. It was, wow. He said it was his funnest visit, his best visit. He would have went there in a heartbeat. HBCU school, did you hear what he said? Mm -hmm. Why K-Bun didn't go mm -hmm. but, to that HBCU school? And, and Dion said the same thing. He, how can we get more money for our coaches so our kids can come here right. and so our kids don't feel like they're going somewhere less? That's right. the main one of what the What he's factors. talking about is evening the playing field. Absolutely. And, that starts across the board. And obviously with Dion, it starts with his coaching, obviously his facilities, the campus. You know, yeah. I never, like I said, I never envisioned, like I said, I was just thankful or grateful just to go where I went. Yes, sir. I didn't have a lot of options or offers coming out of high school to, to play college football. I had some Division II basketball offers. I, honestly, I would have, had I known, because I had already signed a football scholarship on the heels of someone else. And then later on in the season, because we went from football to basketball, and then after the basketball season, my coach told me that I had some off some D2 uh, basketball offers. Mm -hmm. And I was intrigued. I wanted to go play basketball, because I, I probably would have gone to play D2 basketball. But when I went to UT Chattanooga after my freshman year, because the first year coach, he didn't allow guys to play any other sports, the new coach came in, and after I, my freshman year, Sophomore year came about. I asked the coach if I could walk on the basketball team. And his response to me, he was like, do you know, can you play basketball? And then Hell he like, no. He was like, do you know, because where, <laughs> where his office was, the arena, we were in the, the, the arena, the basketball arena, and they were down there practicing at that time. And then he was like, you, do you know, he was like, those guys are recruited 
to play that sport. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I'm gonna, he's, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna give you this proposition. He said, if you can go on, uh, walk on our basketball team, go down and walk on our basketball team and make it, he said, that'll tell me what type of athlete you are. Very true. And I played three years. That's awesome. I played three years. Yeah. Still trash to this day, though. <laughs> and I'm nice. I'm, I'm nice with trash. It. If I would have really put my eggs no, in the you basket, in so, okay, I would have been that's in the question, NBA. That's a yeah. question. Because, again, we, we have this NBA. argument, not me and him, but every NBA and NFL player, right? We always say we could have played in the NBA. We, we would have. First of all, shut up. No, 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 anyway, no, that's French. not the discussion. All of a sudden, our discussion. show just went from English to French. You're talking about <laughs> we. We? No, we. What? So, we, I say I could play the NBA mm. if I would have put mm. all that time and effort towards basketball, mm. obviously, right? And there's NBA guys saying I could play in the NFL because mm. it's easier, whatever. You get both, right? You yeah. see them athletically at 22, 23. What's the difference between the NBA, NFL mindset and athleticism? Um, mindset and athleticism, nothing. Okay. Nothing. Well, I'm gonna tell y'all something, man. NBA, mm -hmm. you know how good those guys are? That's a whole different level. How good those guys are, just, you know, I, Trey Young and the Curry, right. man. Very it's skillful. It's, it's just very another, skillful. It's yeah, different. Skill. So Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler swears. I don't know if you've been out there yeah, with him. He swears he, he can play a right. NFL play wide football. receiver. Right, right, exactly. Right. And we got Dak Prescott. Everybody th terrible. Right. Terrible. <laughs> right. But I mean, you know, athletic. You know, athletic. athletic. But nah, it's just it's a whole nother. It's a whole nother level. I think you can be good in basketball. Right. But to play at that level, those guys are so. You got to think about. I think I saw a stat only like, what. 4,000 people ever in the history played of playing the NBA. Yeah, like, think about that, number. man. Like, really but small it's number. certain guys that you see that you could, if, if, if it was a, an, an opportunity for them to make a switch or transition or play another sport, what you player? can see certain guys yeah. like a Jimmy Butler. Yeah. What, that what, what player in the NBA could play in the NFL? Give, would, me, give me LeBron. Give me, I say, I, I say I no. I, I think he's too tight. Tight. I, 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 tight end. I don't know. I, I don't know about that one. I don't Jimmy? Know about Jimmy, a receiver. I, Jimmy Butler, uh, I would say Jimmy. John Wall. Who? John Wall. John Wall. Because of speed. John Wall, fast and, as hell. And I said I would say Russell Westbrook. I would put Russell yeah, Westbrook Russell. in there just because yeah. his, his tenacity. tenacity. Oh, he's he's like, yeah. dog, bro. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now flip the script. A AI, AI, because AI played in yeah. high school. Oh yeah, play. he could have played. Yeah. He could have played quarterback. Yeah. He could have played. Yeah. So what <laughs> NFL players could have played in the NBA, if I any? Think, I think DK. Okay, DK really? He got, nice, he got a game like that? I don't know. I'm talking about from just athletic. Athleticism, yeah, right. Athletic. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's like DK. DK look a little top heavy for me. Nah. No, I don't know. He, I don't know. He called you got stiff, too many DK. muscles. DK say he, DK, he's you stiff. got a lot of muscles. <laughs> we going to address that next week. Oh, then there it is. There DK, it is. Got, you got a lot of muscles. You might be kind of tight in the chest. You might have to do some exercise and band that's how to loosen that, <laughs> those, those pectoral muscles up. You know what I mean? Those pectoral muscles. DK yeah. is you, man. No, the no, second coming. Second coming. So who else, who else? Like, okay, DK possibly. Like everybody think they can hoop. That's the problem. Right. Um, I'm a, that's that's probably it. Wow. You know, I'm gonna be real with you, man. But there have been and, some and guys in the like uh, Antonio Gates, Antonio Gonzalez, yeah, those guys. Two. And again, played, yeah. played, yeah. Played, to me, I think Randy those are Moss bad played, examples yeah. because the six four, six five, six six, is, you can't be a big in the in no, right. Yeah. 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 And they're on, they're big guard. for tight right. tight ends, but they're not big. You got to be a one or two. You know what I mean? Or yeah. maybe a three. You know what I mean? Like a Scotty Pippen, like a, you know, a tweener. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, dog. You're looking at me like, I don't know what you mean. Yes, yeah, like, I'm just, no, we're having mean. a discussion. I don't want to have but a discussion I'm looking, with you. I'm looking I don't look you. at me when you're having a basketball discussion. <laughs> I, I, you, I shouldn't be looking you're at right, you. right, you should I not. Should I forbid you, you cannot, look at me. Because you can't play. He, can't, he, can't, he thinks because he's I'm not athletic, he that, can play. Uh, let me finish. He thinks. Because he's athletic, he can play basketball. But that's not the point I'm trying to make. You have it's, to have the skill. You can't, because you're not going to bully people. No, 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 See, no, no, he right. can't Absolutely. shoot. First of See, all. I can Ooh, shoot. First of all. So Ooh. since he can't shoot, he would have to be a big, and he can't be a big because he's not big. No, Me, no, on no. the other hand, right. I can shoot, so I can play out here all so day. So who would you compare your game to? Ooh. OK, to be honest. Kwame Brown. <laughs> hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> Smush Parker. Hey, <laughs> real. This is what I. This is what I said again. And I only said it because I, I was just watching. This, I know. I just. I was watching this whole Gil. This him. I know. Gil we and, love Kwame and, Brown. And Stop Kwame playing. Gil. We love Kwame. And it's but just real, but real what's talk, going on with those two. That's when we had, we used up. to always play at Calabasas, right? Yep. With Mitch Richmond yep. and Jalen Rose, Great right? Mark Jack, right? Yeah. We used to always play up there. Yeah. And I was always said I thought that I could have played the same position as Snow for the Eagles when he was playing with AI, um, the point for, guard. For the San Francisco? So, so Eric, Eric Snow. Snow. Eric Snow. So you compared him to Eric Snow. I'm, I thought that I could be that guy. Because I thought, again, he was, wait, maybe eight points, maybe six assists, and maybe six rebounds. I'm gonna, I think I could put up those numbers. In the NBA? In the NBA. Yeah, drug test them, y'all. <laughs> Hey, 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 just you tell me y'all can't get six points. No, nah. just to piggyback nah. off what he said, one of the guys that he mentioned was Mitch Richmond, who's dog. a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Hater. We've had him on the show twice, and he's asked this question twice he's about if he up, could Mitch. play. And he had a comparison, like he gave Mitch an opportunity, like, yo, if you had to choose no, one of us, you go. me or him, yeah. who would you pick? Picked you. He lied. <laughs> he lied on camera. He lied. Oh, no, I'm like, this is me. T Gaines, he it's lied. Not just, it's not just athleticism. First of all, you got to have a little bit of skill set. Like I said, I was way more athletic skills, than you in the to my in 20s. The, I was to, way more athletic. Right now, yeah, to, to play in the NBA, way like more you athletic. Just, we, we all agree there's a skill set that you have to have. Got to have a skill set. Where I am right now versus if I would have put my efforts into basketball, my skill set would have been enhanced to the point that I could have played in the NBA. Not only just my athleticism, <laughs> in addition to me enhancing my skill set, but you got to have the IQ of the game so as well. So compare, who would you have played like? I, I, I want to compare I, Me, I say Scotty Pippen. I say Scotty Pippen. Top 50. I say <laughs> you Scottie see what Pippen. I'm saying? I say Scottie not Pippen. Not even... I'm, I'm not saying not... Top 50. You, you know that he's you're talking about comparison of games. All, all around players. You, he's exactly. Six, I'm going to play. You got to compare yourself to somebody who's six three. No, I can I can condense my size to a person that I see and compare. <laughs> you, you, you little Pippin. Right. You little, I can, okay. Yeah, I can be little, little Pippin. Pippin. If you want to, he plays on defense. You like he's a junior athletic. varsity Pippin. He plays in transition, bro. You can you can get points just off. 50-50 ball, just on hustle right. alone. That's all right. I started, when I when I played at UT Chattanooga, I started my senior year, I started like five or six games. And I was rewarded because of the way that I practiced and my hustle. I knew that I wasn't a shooter. I knew that wasn't my game. I was guarding the bigs. I played like three, four, five. Mm -hmm. But that was because of what I did on the court. My coaches said If uh, My coach, like we, we it, basketball is division one. Mm -hmm. Division one basketball. Can you? It was you, 1974. What are you talking matter. about? What are you talking it about? Matter. <laughs> Bill Russell them played in 1974, and they're considered the greatest because they played basketball. Jerry West, all of them because they played. See the what best. I'm saying? To you, you open up the you open up the Pandora's box. Guys like myself, Kobe, you stop MJ. putting yourself in Whoa. that category. You know I mean? like, guys like yourself. I'm out. I'm out. What? Get, this, get it off me. Get this. Get it off me. <laughs> I, you see what I was saying? Hey, hey, it's innocent. Yeah, hey, I was with hey. you until that part, Thank bro. Thank you. Now you see what I gotta do. You said with guys all this, like man. myself, MJ, and Kobe. Yeah, he put himself in that what are you category. Only thing y'all got in common, y'all black. <laughs> hey, we're Hall of Famers. What are you talking about? Oh, we're you. Hall of Famers. In different uh, sports, though. It don't matter. You oh, we excelled at our. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is how we get down. We excelled at our sport already. This is how we rolling. You dig? What? Oh. So, but no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming on today, man. Appreciate Let everybody you. know where they can find you at, bro. They can't find me. I'm a ghost. Okay, there it is. <laughs> find me on this podcast. There it See is. Where you can find me at. But there no, but is. I mean, we thank you for coming out. And Absolutely. like I said, I mean, I get asked all the time. Not all the time, but sometimes. Like, their parents, they're, they know that I'm not a trainer. They ask me sometimes, well, well, can you help my you know, son do this, that, and the other? Yeah. I can give them some little nuggets of what I've done throughout the course of my career. And, and I think it's important, before we let you go, to, to, to really let parents and, and coaches know that the, the different guys that you train, yeah. they're at different positions. Correct. You have to train them according to yes. their sport and their position. Yes. Yes, so sir. that's how I think I progressed how I did and when I did because I had a trainer that was knowledgeable, number one, yep. about the body, what I needed to do, and then it was position-specific yes, workouts. 
yep. that I that we cater to. Cause like I said, in high school, yeah, you're gonna do, you're gonna you're gonna try to build your four major muscle groups. You know, you, your quads mm-hmm. and your chest and your arms. So you're gonna do your squats. You're mm-hmm. gonna do your leg press. You're gonna do your bench and the incline. Those are like the four main staple ones, like in high school. Mm-hmm. But then as you progress, your body's gonna change. Your position may change. Yep. And so for me, what helped me, like I started, we start isolating the muscle groups. We start doing dumbbells. I, I don't know when the last time that I've gotten up under a bench mm-hmm. and bench pressed. You know what yep. I mean? In high school, like, yeah, I got, I, the, the most that I've ever benched was 365. Yes, sir. And I maxed that out. And I did that like in the league one time, just messing around, you know, challenge, some, some linemen challenged mm-hmm. me. That was it. I haven't done that since. But I did things with as I got older, start working smarter and not harder. Absolutely. And then obviously I incorporated the band workouts. Mm-hmm. My trainer started doing things with the dumbbells. Yeah. You know, I wasn't as fast as this guy was coming out of college. He was a four three guy. Yeah. When I when I wanted to come when I went ran in a combine, my forty time was a four six three. But if you look on the film, you turn on the tape, I've never been caught from behind. I'm always beating DBs that were highly touted, number one, number two, number three, five picks. I'm beating them deep because I had something that I worked on during the off season, the fast twitch muscles. Mm-hmm. You, I'm yep. sure you are familiar with that. Mm-hmm. Those are things that I did to enhance on my deficiencies as, you know, from high school, college, and then when I got to the pros, I wanted to be on par, if not better, than my opponents. Mm-hmm. Love it. Those are still facts too. old. Still <laughs> old. I can still dust old. anybody in here. Anybody in this? I can I got, dust. I got five racks on I can on dust you. anybody. I got in five here. racks on anybody G. Scott in beat this dude right now. I can dust anybody in here. I'm ready where you are? We ready where you are? Let's go find out then. Come on now, y'all. Just look like this. He's 65 don't let this, years old, hey, don't y'all. He's 65. I love it. You ain't shit. That's just gonna make you <laughs> great, right great TV. Outside right now. Outside right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Shit. Oh, right yeah. Hey, stretch him out. Hey, put the leg up. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. And yo, you, you, you're gonna Take be. That you, you're struggling. You got me, G. You struggle. What position you play? You struggle with that bet. He know that's not an easy. I took the bet. I took the bet. Take that bet. I took the bet. He can run though. He took the bet. He, he, he's old. I bet. I bet ten thousand to you. Ooh. Trust American. He, 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 hey. American. He know I just look like this. <laughs> Trust me. He know I just look like uh, this. What's up, G? I just look like this. He in a sweatsuit, too. And we ready. Hey, we got I opportunity just look right like this. Hey, man, I know what you could do. Yeah, there it is. Know. I know what you could do. Hey, get your popcorn ready podcast. You <laughs> see how we do Gaines Gaines right Gaines Gaines in the building. You ruined, Travel you Gaines. It. I would say trainer of the stars, but no, this is a trainer of just talent. You know what I mean? If you want your kids to elevate and guys coming out of college, if you want to elevate your game, obviously this is one of the guys, top one of the top trainers here in LA. I was very fortunate to meet him some years ago. Man, what what it was like what 20? 10, 11? Yeah. 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 Y'all had the new spot? Yeah, Yeah. they had the spot. Him and Hank Baskin and some other guys, and obviously transitioned and kind of did your own thing. Yeah. Man. Kind of like you said, he went off the map, you know what I mean? and, uh, but still heard his name, you know, out there in that space of, uh, you know, really getting guys and enhancing and making these guys better, better athletes. So, man, we appreciate you uh, coming you, on the show, man. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, appreciate brother. Appreciate you. It. There it is. Get your popcorn podcast. All right. Yeah. G. Scott, you don't hey. want that, bro. G, I thought you was 4-4, man. <laughs> <laughs>